Right guys, welcome back. I think this will be the final video. I'm going to leave you to it. I've presented an awful lot of information. Uh, I hope it was useful. Um, Substance Painter is really, really cool for texturing your, your terrains uh, and you can do a lot of stuff in real time, which is really, really good for iterating and getting the look that you want. Um, so yeah, I'm a, a big fan of this workflow. Uh, if you've got any comments or questions about this video series, please uh, feel free to send me a message on Teams. I'm more than happy to help or talk you through any issues uh, that you that you might be having. So uh, the the baking process is finished. Uh, it took one minute and seven seconds, which is pretty good to render out however many maps and hey you can see them in my in my project folder so render masks and then we've got a bunch of targa images which is fine for these masks and what I want you to notice is how these have been procedurally named from the baking you can see each one has got the uh, UDIM coordinates appended to the end of it and this is this is what makes this is you know the thing that makes this whole process work is having these attributes appended onto the file name so that substance painter can read those in um, and use them effectively so we've got our water masks here we've got our debris layer and we've got our curvature which was empty the reason it was empty is because like I said if you're not precise if we take a look at the attribute name it's actually called HF for high frequency, high frequency curvature. I just wrote curvature. So that's um, again going back to me saying you've got to be super precise for this to work, making sure you're naming all the attributes correctly. So I had to change it here. So previously I just wrote curvature like that when in fact it should be HF curvature. And also I had to change it on the Baker node as well to HF curvature. So that was why it rendered out completely black. Um, but you know, that was kind of good in a way. Got to see, <laughs> got to see a failure. Um, so, all right, awesome. So we can jump back into Substance Painter, and here's one I prepared earlier. So we've just, I've just imported one. But now it's just a matter of grabbing your your masks. So we'll start off with this water mask here and I'll just drag that into the content browser and I'll make those changes, set that to be a texture and just import it for this current session. All right. And there we go. You can just about make out the, the, the four on there uh, indicating that these are UDIM tiles. All right, so let's add that um, water mask and how we can use it. So again, very, very similar technique. So I'm just going to drop down a fill layer. Um, for this, we're not bothered about metal or normal or any of the other channels or even height. We don't really need to worry about. And I'm going to just apply a black mask to that. And on this mask, I want to apply uh, a fill. All right. So we can add a fill. All right. And that will fill it a grayscale color at the moment. But what we want to do is we want to use our generated mask on there to drive this mask. And there we go. And now you can see we've managed to successfully import that water mask from Houdini. All right. So very, very quickly, all I did was I cranked up the roughness and I just gave it a nice, deep, sort of dirty, muddy, watery color. Um, on the surface there and you can see we're getting some nice reflections off that water mask uh, just adding that extra little bit of detail to our to our maps all right so what I'd recommend you do if you've you know if you've managed to bake out the rest of your maps from Houdini see how you can blend in other um, other surfaces as well. So what I'd suggest is maybe go back to Quixel Bridge and see if you can use some other texture maps and some other materials to really start adding that visual richness and the, the detail to uh, to your terrains. Um, so yeah, that was a short video. So that was pretty quick. Um, like I said, I hope it was useful. Um, and if you've got any questions, feel free to reach out on Teams. I'll speak to you soon. Thanks a lot. Goodbye.